Hello everyone! It's me again, Dr. Gator Bedovitas. And for today's video, we're gonna talk about how to determine your skin type and why it's so important. I know I should have done this video a long time ago because you will hear me talk about skin types when I refer to products or procedures and treatments and it only dawned on me that I haven't really discussed it when someone messaged me and asked me what it meant to have oily skin. So in the next few minutes, I hope that you join me and let us both discover what your skin type really is. Let me first give you a few reasons why knowing your skin type is important. First, knowing your skin type will make choosing products and ingredients and developing a skincare routine easier. This is because number two, using the wrong products for your skin type can actually worsen your existing skin issues and problems. And finally, your skin type also affects how these products and ingredients work on your skin. For example, if you have oily skin and you choose products that are cream-based or balm-based that are thick and really meant to moisturize, you may end up with an even more oily skin and be prone to breakouts and acne. But then if you have dry skin and you end up with products that are irritating or contain harsh ingredients, it may exacerbate the dryness of your skin and trigger, you know, skin issues and problems that you don't really want to have. Now, I'm sure most of you have read a lot of literature online, articles, blogs, talking about skin types. And you would see some talking about having four skin types, there's like six, there's nine, and there's even 16. In a way, most of them are correct. It really depends on how you explain what skin types are. But for me, I only refer to four basic skin types which can be found on a person with healthy skin. Dry, oily, combination, and normal skin. And there are some which I refer to as subtypes which include acne-prone, dehydrated, mature or photo-age skin, and sensitive skin. Before I go into detail in describing each of the skin types, I'm sure you would want to know what yours is. So in the next few minutes, I'm gonna be talking about um, different ways on how you can determine your skin type. Now everyone get ready with your pen and paper because it's quiz time! Question number one. Which of the following statements best describe your pores? Letter A, large and visible all over. Letter B, large to medium size and only visible on the T-zone. Letter C, small and not visible. Or letter D, small all over with some medium-sized ones on the nose and the chin. Question number two. Which of the following is a top skin concern? Letter A, acne. Letter B, oil control and pores. Letter C, dryness and hydration. And letter D, none of the above. Question number three. In the middle of the day, how would you describe how your skin shines and how does it feel when you touch it? Letter A, shining bright like a diamond, slick and greasy. Letter B, shiny on the T-zone but dry on the others. Letter C, dull everywhere, rough and scaly. And letter D, radiant, healthy and smooth. Question number four. What does your skin need the most in the afternoons? Letter A, blotting paper and powder all over. Letter B, blotting paper and powder but only on the forehead, nose, and chin. Letter C, a moisturizer. And letter D, none of the above. And last question, how does your face feel a few minutes after washing? Letter A, clean until the oil soon returns. Letter B, Clean, but then it gets oily on the T-zone and dry on the cheeks. Letter C, itchy and a little bit dry. Or D, clean, healthy, and smooth. If you answered mostly A's, it means you have oily skin. If you answered mostly B's, then it means you have combination skin. If you answered mostly C's, it means you have dry skin. And if you picked mostly D's, it means you have normal skin. Now, if you're not convinced on the result of Quizmo, or if you really want to make sure, there are three other things that you can do to determine your skin type. First is the so-called day test. Now, the day test is easiest because all you have to do is observe your skin by noontime or in the afternoon. If it's really oily all over, then it means you have oily skin. 
kung combination naman siya, like oily on the T-zone and then dry on the cheeks or vice versa, then you have combination skin. But then if it feels dry, itchy, scaly, and rough, and you need a moisturizer, then it means you have dry skin. And if you experience a little bit of oiliness, flakiness, but it's not really bothering you, then it means you have normal skin. One issue with the day test though is hindi siya masyadong reliable if you wash your face in the middle of the day or if you are really exposed to the elements because these can sort of influence what your skin type is. And in this case, you can do the wash test. To do this, you must wash your face with a gentle cleanser. Don't put anything after that. Wait 20 to 30 minutes and observe how your skin behaves. To have a more objective evaluation and result, I recommend that you get a blotting paper or a tissue paper. Press them on different areas of your skin like your forehead, your nose, your chin, and then your cheeks. If your blotting paper or tissue paper is soaked through, then it means you have oily skin. If it's blotchy with some areas that are soaked, others not, then it means you have combination skin. If nothing changed at all, as in your blotting paper and tissue paper looks the same, and you actually feel tight all over, then it means you have dry skin. If you have areas in your blotting paper and tissue paper that are slightly soaked but your skin doesn't feel dry, then it means you have normal skin. And if you're still not convinced, as in you really want to find out the truth, the third thing you can do is to consult your dermatologist. Now let's talk about the different skin types. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, there are four basic skin types of healthy skin. We must remember that our skin type is genetically determined, but it's not fixed. It may vary depending on the external factors and the environment we are exposed to. Let's start with normal skin. This is also known as a well-balanced skin because your overall sebum production and moisture levels are balanced such that you are neither too oily or too dry. Yung mga individuals with normal skin, mapapansin nyo that they have fine pores, uniform color, even complexion, and skin that is smooth to the touch while occasionally experiencing a little oiliness and a little dryness here and there. So when choosing products, stick to the ones that are meant for your skin type and avoid buying those that are, you know, heavy and creamy made for dry skin or the ones that are drying which are meant for oily skin. Now let's talk about dry skin. This type of skin is one that produces less sebum than normal skin which results in skin that lacks what you call the natural moisturizing factors that attract moisture, ceramides, fatty acids, and lipids. Because of this, the skin is unable to retain moisture and nahihirapan siya to build an effective barrier against the environment. Dry skin can actually range from being mildly dry, which is what I have, characterized by skin that is rough, dull, and sometimes a feeling of tightness, to something that is extremely dry, which is characterized by scaliness, redness, itchiness, and sometimes even cracking. This skin type worsens in dry climates and require frequent or repeated applications of moisturizers. If you have dry skin like me, you should avoid ingredients that are meant to dry or those that are recommended for oily and acne-prone skin. So ano ba yung mga ingredients na yon? Usually salicylic acid, like witch hazel. When you use these products, it can actually make you break out because your skin will try to compensate by making more oil. Moisturizer is a dry skin's best friend. So if you look in my bag, I always have with me like a small tube of a moisturizer. And everything that I use on my skin has a moisturizing effect. The third skin type is oily skin, which is skin that produces more oil than normal. Individuals with oily skin will have larger or visible pores and a thicker, shiny skin. Having this skin type can be due to genetics, your hormones, or even the products that you use on your skin. One good thing about having oily skin is that usually they're the least sensitive and are more resilient when it comes to trying out new products or ingredients. The downside is patients or individuals with oily skin are prone to acne and breakouts. Proper cleansing, even double cleansing at that, 
and regular exfoliation should both be part of an oily skin's skincare routine. Moisturizers are still beneficial, especially those that contain ingredients that control oil production and clog your pores. Just make sure that you use those that are lightweight, gel, or water-based that help balance oil production and will not clog your pores. And then finally, we have combination skin, which is a mixture of the different skin types. To be honest, sometimes I have combination skin, I would say one third of the year, when the weather is warmer or more humid. In my experience, combination skin is the most common skin type, wherein you will be oily on your T-zone, your forehead, nose, and chin, where there is abundance of oil glands, and sometimes you may even have visible pores, and you tend to be dry or normal on the cheeks. The good thing about having combination skin is that it's easy to manage, and there are a lot of products out there that work with this kind of skin. You can go for products that say good for all skin types or like what I do, I spot treat. I use ingredients made for oily skin on my T-zone and then I use moisturizers on my cheeks. For instance, at night, I use my retinol 0.5% on my T-zone and a lower concentration on my cheeks. But for all skin types, I recommend that you do not use the following ingredients on your face. Denatured or SD alcohol, harsh or extremely drying cleansers, yes, even if you have oily skin, abrasive scrubs or those thick, hard brushes to exfoliate your skin, and other irritating ingredients such as your peppermint or your menthol. In conclusion, for those of you with healthy skin, Knowing your skin type will help you choose the right products and ingredients for your skin. You will also know how to properly use them. And you will be guided on how to really take good care of your skin. Well, I hope that I was able to help you determine your skin type. But just remember though that what we discussed are the basics and they do not address the wide variety of skin issues that you can encounter regardless of your skin type. For instance, skin sensitivity, redness, acne, aging, or pigmentation. It's really not that simple. As a matter of fact, our skin needs can change over time or even in a matter of days to weeks. For instance, when you travel and here in the Philippines you have combination skin and you go to say Europe or the US and there you would have dry skin. What's really important is that you listen to your skin, understand your issues, and carefully select your products and ingredients that work well with your skin. And of course, I believe that it's very important and valuable that you are guided by someone, an expert who understands skin inside and out, like your dermatologist. So for any skin issues, anything that you don't know, that you don't understand, or you want to better understand, don't hesitate to consult your dermatologist. So this ends my video on determining your skin type. I hope that you were able to at least get an idea of what your skin type or skin types are. And again, if you appreciate this video, if you like it, please don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button. And I will see you again soon. Bye!